Hi everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, and today, welcome to basically the first episode of a new series created by the suggestion of a YouTuber today who asked me to compare Witcher 3 and Batman Arkham Knight, of course, the console version. And I decided, you know what? I really do like comparing and contrasting video games, but I certainly don't like popping off a comment in a YouTube channel because it just doesn't really give me enough time to put my thoughts together. So I'm going to start making videos whenever I see two games that I really want to compare. In the past, I had actually thought about comparing Witcher 3 and Fable because I had actually found a lot of similarities. And what was really cool is some of you had found similarities to other games, as well as many of you saying, you know, I thought I was the only one who thought it looked like that. But Here's two games that couldn't really be more stylistically different except for uh, sort of brooding protagonists. And we're just going to jump right in. And I'm going to sort of compare them in the way that I would do reviewing as a normal single title. But what's really cool about this one is one of the things we're going to cover is the reflection of the fiction as the very last category. So the first thing, you have Witcher 3 on one side, you have Batman Arkham Knight. Both, we're going to go with the console versions because currently I really can't compare anything to Arkham Knight on the PC except for a hot bag of steaming trash. So console versions only. Now, when it comes to graphics, these are two really distinct titles that are also required to do fairly different things. For example, Witcher 3 having an incredibly long draw distance uses a lot of fill rate, but it also has a lot of anti-aliasing for its foliage, and they have to do as well of a job as they can to make sure that the shimmering and the, and the weird mirage effects don't end up ruining the overall image quality there. Now, you also have the color spectrums that are within both games. Witcher 3 goes for what I would consider a, a particularly clear but orangey, almost uh, sunset at all times kinds of, kind of look. Now, of course, you can change that yourself, but there is almost a color filter on that game. Now, Batman is completely different. Batman is stylistically far more like a GTA, far more city-based, and uses and requires a, a far different kind of style set than Witcher 3 does. For example, Witcher 3 requires things to look good at an incredible distance when you're on the ground, which actually does require a different set of tools, ideas, thoughts, and processes than, let's say, you're flying above a building and the only time you ever get close to a building is within one or two blocks. That's the farthest you can see. And with the neon colors in Batman, you have a lot of different colored effects going on and a lot of different colored lighting, where in I guess you would say in Witcher 3, it's more of world lighting, right? It's more of the sun setting and whatever filters they've applied. Now, when it comes to both games, they both do a really good job, first of all, delivering not rock steady frame rates, but pretty acceptable frame rates. Where Witcher 3 sort of drops off and has issues, of course, is where you notice that foliage is in some places it's a little bit patchy, not all the time, but there are definitely places that you can walk around. You can see nothing more than a flat texture on the ground and really no foliage at all. And then also at farther away distances, sometimes that foliage just draws in and what I would consider a somewhat ugly overall look. Now again, not on its own, not singly we're reviewing this, but compared to Batman. Now Batman stylistically has far more effects within the immediate presence area of the player, within the immediate sphere of you know, their their view cone and what they can see. There's a lot of colored lighting going on, a lot of smoke effects, a lot of just overall different things occurring at all times versus Witcher, where those effects may crop up, but many times they're spell effects or they're only during battle or during a cutscene or during particular moments. Now, both have moving sections. One has a horse, probably the dumbest horse, ever created by man, and the other has the Batmobile or Bat Tank, the Abrams Battle Tank of Batmobiles that just has all of a normal U.S. Navy destroyer's armaments on it. And they go about doing things differently. You have the issue where you're riding your horse, which means you're seeing more and more and, and, and you're seeing the landscape quicker in Witcher 3 than and a longer distance than you are in Batman. While in Batman, you're smashing the shit out of everything, throwing debris and particle effects all over the world, like you're just spraying. Now, the two really do, I think, reflect their own genres really well. 
Comparatively though, if you compare the two, I actually like the look of Batman a little bit better. I think Batman really smacks of reflecting its overall world uh, very well, technically well on the consoles. Witcher 3 does as well, but when you put them both together and I think of the awe I felt, there were times when I was riding my horse along the sunset and I was like, man, this looks really good. But in Batman, there's not only the times where you're driving the Batmobile and you're smashing the shit out of things, there's also the times where you're flying up into the sky using the grappling hook, and there's also times where you're just fucking patrolling the entire world like some caped cop. It just seems to overall fit the way I... It just sort of touches my feel buttons a little bit more than Witcher 3 does. Again, indicating that both look really good. Graphically, I think they're excellent. I think both have different, you know, you have The Witcher has a slightly different resolution than the PS4 version. We'll just, you know, it, and both of them basically have slightly different uh, resolutions from one another now that I think about it because of how they do things. Overall, though, I would say they both look really good, but Batman, for me, graphically takes the cake with the neon colored lighting, all of the special effects constantly going on, and some of the wickedest dermatologist nightmare skin texturing I've ever seen. Now, you guys have heard me probably talk about Sherlock Holmes, the last game, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it. I really enjoyed the game, though, so much that I can't remember the name. But anyway, I liked the game. One of the things I noticed about it was that the texture detail in faces was abnormally high, incredibly high for the console versions, just absolutely nut-crunchingly high. And Batman comes really close, but in a Batman game, and I think that's, I think that's really, really cool. Of course, the Batman game also has some other things like flowing cloth and so forth. Both games look really good, but I have to say, just overall the fit for me, Arkham Knight probably gets it there. Now when we come to sound, unfortunately Witcher 3 had some sound bugs for me and some sound bugs for many users. Some users got away with it and they didn't have any, but I unfortunately encountered them so that will impact the overall comparison. Witcher 3 sounds were really good, however that sound bug did creep up enough that at times it ruined the atmosphere if I was doing something that was really epic because it seemed like the busier it got, the higher the chance that it would occur. Now, Batman on the other hand, the sound is really well layered. It is, I, I think, goes from the high to the low spectrum but doesn't just spread it for no reason. It makes sense where everything should go. Voices are where they're supposed to be. They're not too low like you get in some movies and special effects don't climb too high unless they're supposed to. And you have some really cool special effects uh, on the voice or on the sounds in Batman as well. The sound of that Batmobile is something I can't really describe. It reminds me of the first time I saw or I heard the new Banshee in Halo 4, where some people liked it and some people didn't. And it reminded me a little bit of a two-stroke, but I, I really attached to that sound. I liked it, uh, regardless that it was different. In the Batmobile in Batman Arkham Asylum, I absolutely love the sound. So I would say, overall, because of the you know, glitches that were in the sound in Witcher and just the overall anarchy and, and clarity during the anarchy of the Batman game, I'm going to give the, the award there for Batman and say that I, I really do feel that its sound is just a little bit uh, better and there's not a bug. Now, when it comes to music, this one's hard. The music in both games is dramatically different. Where Witcher 3 does have a couple bombastic Americana style, you know, uh, everybody riding their horses with fucking Excalibur raised above their head battle themes, you have Batman, which is the most somber fucking soundtrack I've ever heard in a Batman game and fits it perfectly. From the very first narrative to the very ending, that music fits that world so goddamn well. I mean, it's it's almost like when you go to a funeral and you expect certain music to play, or when you go to a ball game and you hear the national anthem. There's expectations, right? Well, Batman fits in those expectations, but it excels. It absolutely lifts itself up above where it had to be. It didn't have to be that good. And like I said, it did sound like they got a thousand musicians, put them in a room and just tortured them and said, you know, play good music, but you know, remember how you feel right now. And that's what we got. This moody, somber, deep, excellent, super, super complex soundtrack. Now, Witcher 3 also had an amazing soundtrack, but they went a little different with a lot of the tracks being more ambient. Now that fit incredibly well in the atmosphere. So when you were riding your horse out in the sunset and you were just exploring or maybe hunting, gathering flowers, whatever, that was a perfect fit. And in main event locations, it was also a perfect fit. So here is sort of a wash 
where though I do believe Batman excels in many, many, many ways, I actually think Witcher 3 did something that I wasn't expecting a little bit more. It, it went with some ambient tracks and it went with some overall tracks. I just wasn't expecting them to sound the way they did and, and do such a good job of f making me emote emotion. Like I actually felt connected. Now, were they Red Dead Redemption style soundtracks where, you know, people will talk about them in 10 years? I don't think either one is. But I think maybe Batman might be talked a little bit more because it has a larger fiction base. Uh, overall, though, I would say it's a wash. Those, the music, both titles, absolutely stellar. And I would probably buy a soundtrack for either one. Now, when it comes to voice, both have excellent voice actors in different positions and then a couple not-so-good ones. In Batman, you have John Noble as Scarecrow, who is amazing, but you also have Conroy as Batman, who at times didn't sound like himself. It was really odd. I literally had to look a couple times and verify it was the same guy who played it. Uh, also, Batman's other thugs and, and the other bad guys in Batman, they, they do a good job. They're serviceable. They emote. And they, they portray emotion quite well within whatever scene that they're engaged in. And they make, it's a believable scene, you know, as much as a man flying around in a fucking cape with a tank can be believable. I thought that they did a really good job, but it didn't excel above, you know, some of the classics. Now, when it comes to Witcher 3, I felt that there were one or two that were a little off, but overall, the voices were absolutely phenomenal. Again... I can agree to disagree here with most people. Most people like the main character's voice. I don't, but I get that he fits exactly with the fiction. So it's not going to be dinged for that. So I actually think voice, when you take it all together and you play both of them and you really check to see if they're initiating an emotional connection with the gamer at the time that they're talking or doing whatever they're doing, I think both games do an excellent job even Steven, completely even in that category. Now, when it comes to gameplay, God damn, they, they, they really couldn't be different. You know, they both do have a little bit of collecting, but Batman's is, is far more investigative and more about, you know, the overall world, where Witcher's is more about a, a, an open world where things are just around plants and stuff like that. And they're both in somewhat of an open world style, I guess you could say, but they both are overall driven by a particular narrative. Now, when it comes to their gameplay, I think Witcher 3 absolutely fucking nailed its gameplay for the most part. Uh, it, it's paced very well. It's delivered in just the right lengths and sections for you to not grow tired of it. Uh, also, the fact is, is that the gameplay revolves around the skeleton of the story and not uh, the, the main story being the end-all, be-all. And instead, the meat of that game is the interesting side stories. However, just as interesting is the fact that Batman sort of does the same thing. It has a good number of side missions that are incredibly well done for a Batman game, including the fact that many times when you go to help somebody or rescue somebody or find a bad guy or investigate a murder, you don't exactly know 100% where you're supposed to go or what you're supposed to do. And it requires, surprise, surprise of all things, thought, which really, really elevated that game in my eyes. So, both of those, their gameplay is fantastic. The combat in Witcher 3, though I had no problems with it, I don't think anybody would argue and say that it isn't a great deal shallower than Batman's. Batman has an incredible a number of upgrades and overall gadgets to use. It's just within that fiction, guys. It's not a problem with Witcher 3 in any way, shape, or form. But the fact remains that basically Batman just does a lot of shit in a contained space. And Witcher is more about that thought process of finding, you know, uh, if, if, if this creature is allergic to this certain potion. And that is also incredibly well done. I also like the fact that you can upgrade your equipment and stuff a lot more in Witcher than you can in Batman. One of the problems I've always had, and I have this time a lot with Batman, is that DLC. The DLC kills my soul. When I go into my game and I see that there are a good number of skins I just can't have because I didn't buy the copy seven times or or I didn't wait for the game of the year edition with all of the skins, that just infuriates me. It's something that it, it's always bothered me. And I just feel that, you know, Batman, he's got his, you know, bat house and 
Batcave, whatever, and I want to go there and I want to change suits occasionally. So what I did when I played Batman this time is I put on the worst looking suit and I played the entire game that way and basically thought in my head that if anybody was asking me why the fuck I looked all strange, I would just simply say, you know, my tailor was out. Now, Witcher 3, again, a lot more equipment that you can upgrade, a lot of things you can do there. Batman, a lot of, uh, you know, upgrades to different actions and the fighting and so forth. So I think Batman's just got it when it comes to the fighting. While the overall customization of the character, I, I would say it's really close because you have this crafting system in Witcher 3 that allows for so much adjustment and changes. And you don't really have that in Batman, but you have an incredible number of skills and changes to the world. What do I mean by that? Well, in Batman, a lot of the skills that you get change how you traverse the world or what you do or your combos and so forth. Well, in Witcher 3, it's usually cosmetic, right? Uh, sorry, not cosmetic. You see it as cosmetic and it's cosmetic and it also affects your stats. But it doesn't many times affect you just like leaping and jumping and bat hooking around the world. So they have totally different gameplay in that overall feel. They have a different gameplay again in the skeleton of their story. Uh, though they do mimic one another a little bit more, I would say that the story is probably less ham-fisted in Witcher 3, despite the fact that I found it a little bit boring compared to the main story in Batman uh, Arkham Knight, which is a little off. So when it comes to gameplay, you have all of these different systems at play within both games. Both games do have some kind of collectibles type of system. They don't have watchtowers like an Ubisoft game or anything of that sort, but they do have an overall number of activities that you can go and enjoy. I have to actually say that this goes to Batman's favor. Not only is it because they introduce a, what I consider a flexibility towards those side missions in not exactly knowing what's going on. The Witcher 3 does that with its chemicals. The fact is there's just not as much flexibility there. And overall, when it comes to Batman's side missions, there was just so many things going on and the way they're delivered to you with their narrative. I just sort of have to say that I, I, I sort of side with Batman on this one when it comes just to, you know, how those side quests are delivered and uh, just the overall gameplay as a whole. Now, when, traversal we've discussed already. I think when it comes down to the overall open world gameplay, you know, if the control was a tiny bit better in Witcher, Witcher would have this. But first of all, Witcher's swim controls are terrible, and unfortunately, you do end up needing to swim at times. Batman almost never has any issues whatsoever with control unless you get in that fucking Batmobile and you have to do platforms. So they both have negatives. However... I personally feel that because of the length of the games, Witcher 3 sort of suffers a little bit in this point where, where Batman, you can jump off of those missions fairly quickly. However, that length is also a negative for Batman. It is a shorter game. Witcher 3 is a massive, a completely sprawling, unbelievable Encyclopedia Britannica of role-playing. That game is massive and it allows you to do massive things in it, and it allows you to explore for fucking ever. 300 hours is what, is what some of them are saying, and I have seen people on Steam come fucking close to that, and that just blows my mind. While Batman, maybe more of a condensed uh, you know, experience, maybe more of an experience a little bit closer to a controlled fiction, but still super enjoyable, just not as long and doesn't offer as much content as a whole. But what it does offer in short spurts, I think probably a little bit better. So gameplay, how do they both rate? I would say that even though Batman is better in certain particular instances, and even though Witcher 3 has issues with the control in various places, uh, it is also the longer game. Batman's the shorter game, but his control's easier. I think this is a complete wash. Now, I've thought about this for a while, and I just can't come up with where I feel that one is better than the other. Because if you just say it's the length of the game, right? Well, then I could just walk everywhere in Batman and, and you know, just take hours to do anything. I mean, you can extend the time. If we're talking about native, if we're talking about absolute native time that I spent on games and what I did during them, I think they both offer uh, gameplay in different 
bits. You know, there's a more of a longevity with Witcher 3 and a more of a long tail gameplay. But with Batman, those shorter vertical slices are really fucking good. And I just, I have to say, you know, I have no problem saying they're equal. I think they're great games, both of them. I think they both have issues uh, that do bring them down. But I think that what's really cool is wherever there's a weakness, there seems to be a strength that is almost equal and opposite to it. And that's awesome. I mean, you really can't go wrong in the gameplay department. Now, fun factor. Man, this is hard, guys. Witcher 3 is a blast because it allows for you to explore. A lot like Red Dead, I'm going to be honest. You know, some people were saying, oh, well, I think, I don't think, uh, you know, Witcher 3 is as much like Fable as it is like Red Dead. And I see that. Not not only because of the hunting, you know, and the, the, the fucking, the gathering and stuff like that, but just the landscape and riding your horse and, and so forth. I really do see that. And to me, that is not necessarily as much fun as it is a later category I'm going to cover, which is the reflection of the fiction. But I still do think it's really fun. I think it offers a dramatic amount, an almost unbelievable amount of gameplay as in Witcher 3. When it comes to the open world and just exploring and riding your horse and just doing things. And that's fun. It is fun. Also, the combat, even though it's a little bit more tit-for-tat than, say, Batman, it is also fun. I like it. I like upgrading to the different skills. I like finding out how to mix and match the spells the way I want to. I would say that I had a boatload of fun with Witcher 3. Now, when it comes to Batman, I also had a boatload of fun. However, with Batman, there are more times where I found myself slightly aggravated than I did in Witcher, even though I played Witcher longer. So what do I mean by that? Well, the fact is, Batman really does at times make you feel like you can't figure out why the Batmobile's in there. It is in there a lot, and there are some platforming sections within that game, and at times it really does sort of bother you. And, or bother me, I'm gonna say me. And when it comes to Witcher, there were things that did bother me, underwater swimming, you know, and stuff like that, but overall, it just offered a longer tail enjoyment factor. The fun factor was there for a longer period of time, uh, though it may have been less. So you have this longer, but maybe less intense, enjoyable experience with Witcher 3, and you have a shorter, possibly more intense, but, but brought down at times by its own experience, Batman Arkham Asylum, or Batman uh, Arkham Knight. So in all honesty, I would say the fun factor, the sheer fun factor, and th this is never contained by the amount of time you want to play a game, and it, there is no expectation of how long you will play a game to come to this rating. The fact is, I think Witcher 3 wins when it comes to fun factor. It just allows for more to occur in a less controlled environment. There are different kinds of games and they offer different types of fun. And though there's visceral, just bone-shattering fun over here, and you guys know that's my shit, man. I absolutely love it. Uh, at the same time, you have Witcher, where you can have these amazing battles, these awesome vistas, and this exploratory enjoyment. Now, of course, that's an enjoyment that only some people are gonna like. Well, guess what? In Batman, some people don't wanna punch people in the face as much as I do, which I cannot actually believe, but yes, it's true. So, this is just my opinion. I would say Witcher 3 wins by the sheer fact of its longevity, the way the story, I'm sorry, the way the game world is put together, what you can do in it, how long you can do that, and that it fits very well with the gameplay as well. So, the last one is the reflection of the fiction. Now, this is a hilarious category for the sheer fact that both actually have a good deal of fiction, though Witcher 3 only has a couple books, it does have novels. And then Batman, of course, is Batman, which is basically an entire planet's worth of history, uh, though, at the same time, alternating histories depending on the various different origin stories and, and all that crap. But just going by how they reflect their fiction. It's very important for a game to reflect its fiction accurately. Witcher 3 does. D even if I ding it for things because as a game they're not as enjoyable, Witcher 3 really does reflect its fiction incredibly well. Batman also incredibly well. Both of those games feel like fully realized worlds within their fiction. What do I mean by that? I mean that technically my adventures in Witcher 3 could be turned into a novel and my adventures in Batman could easily become a comic. And that is, I think, both of the strengths of both of these games. They show absolute strength in backing up the fictions of their world. 
That is super important when it comes to the other things like fun factor and gameplay because all these things feed into one another. You can get enjoyment from a little hidden secret thing in Batman because it feeds back to the fiction. As well as, as I said before, you can get that enjoyment from riding the horse and you know going and collecting flowers and then fucking finding out how to kill a particular animal or creature in Witcher 3 because it completes and fulfills that fiction. I think that's awesome. I think that that's... Uh, you know, the overall way it should be, and just the enjoyment of both of those games in their reflection of the fiction can't really be explained easily. I haven't heard anybody say that either one of those games isn't actually a lot of damn fun, and that, I think, has a lot to do with the reflection of the fiction. So, that being said... I have to come to a decision here of which one I actually like better as a game. And I think that's really important to remember because as a game, that's different than as an experience or it's different as something else because I could rate things as an experience and I might give different reviews depending on that. But as a game, I rate experience within that as well. But as an enjoyable game, which means actions performed, reactions taken, AI, gameplay, sound, graphics, voice, everything mixed together, I actually do think that Witcher 3 is better. So I really love Batman Arkham Knight. I think it's great. But I do think that Witcher 3 as a whole, as just an absolute total game, offers more despite the fact that it has issues. And it does. Guys, it's got issues. It absolutely does have some problems. And so does Batman. But the difference is is that Witcher 3 offers such an extraordinary amount of content with so few missteps that the ones that are there both shine brighter, but are also more easily removed and ignored. And that's what's cool about Witcher 3, is as an experience and a game, it has a boatload to offer, an incredible, unbelievable amount to offer, and so does Batman. But Witcher 3 just, over time, offers more. It just plain and simple offers more. So, if somebody were to say, between the two, I would think all this in my head, and I would say, I would suggest, for your price, go with Witcher 3, if the person who's asking me really does like both games and both fictions equally. Of course, if you've got to this point of the review, or the verses, you already know that, but we want to make sure it's clarified so that somebody doesn't freak out. The fact is, if somebody came to me and said, hey, listen, I've got the same amount of money. These games are the same price. They're going to, you know, they, I'm going to buy them on the same system or whatever. And I just need to know between the two, you know, what's the bet? What's the more, you know, the best game? Witcher 3, you know, it, it, it really is one of the top games of this year. Uh, Batman is as well, but at least right now, Witcher just offers a smorgasbord of things to do, a longer tail enjoyment, maybe a, a slightly more sedate one. So that's it for me. It was enjoyable. That was actually a little bit more thought-provoking than I thought it was going to be. I want to make sure when it comes to games like this, I don't just spout off in the comments. And I know a lot of you guys have asked me these questions, and I've said that before. And I know a couple people have actually got a little angry, and they're like, oh, just pick a game. But, you know, that's not the way I work. And, uh, you know... I could have done this internally and then went and posted, but I decided I'm going to throw up a video because I think other people in the coming days will probably start comparing these two, maybe as their Game of the Year award, I assume, or maybe they just got a couple bucks and they're trying to decide between the two. So I think it's a pertinent video. I think it's useful. If you like the video, hey, guess what? Hit the thumbs up. If you dislike the video, you know what to do. Thumbs down. Otherwise, if you get a chance, share it. Tell your friends, maybe ask somebody to subscribe. The more subscribers that we get, the more it helps. If you don't follow us on Twitch, that would be cool because the more Twitch subscribers I get, the more quickly I can become a partner there and start filling up my Twitches with giant fucking things of donations. I'm just joking, I wouldn't do that. Anyway, that's it for me. Peace out.